Hello, my name is Michael Granatoski, and I want to thank you so much for your interest in our article, Gate Kinetics of Above and Below Branch Quadrupedal Locomotion in Lemurid Primates. For primates and other arboreal mammals, living in the trees can be difficult. Now, arboreal environments are distinguished by incredible complexity, with substrates of varying diameter, compliance, and orientation. One way that many of these mammals have solved this problem of living in the trees is by adopting a certain level of mechanical flexibility. That is the ability to switch from one locomotor mode to another relatively seamlessly and rapidly. One truly amazing form of locomotor switching is the ability to move from above to below branches, thereby adopting suspensory locomotion. While some primates are capable of arm swinging or bimanual suspension, most mammals tend to use all four limbs, thereby adopting below branch quadrupedal locomotion. Unfortunately, relatively little information is known about this fairly common form of suspensory locomotion. And in this study, we were really interested in trying to understand whether the limb loading patterns of below branch quadrupedal locomotion are similar to what you see during above branch locomotion, or whether it's something entirely different. To fill this gap, we collected single limb forces from two lemur species, the ring-tailed lemur and the rough lemur. Now, what we found was really quite interesting. So, during normal upright quadrupedal locomotion, the primate forelimb experiences lower magnitude forces and tends to be the primary breaking limb. But when these animals switch to below branch quadrupedal locomotion, the forelimb now becomes the primary propulsive and primary weight bearing limb. We were incredibly excited about these results because not only does it show that these primates are able to successfully move both above and below branches, but it shows in order to do so, they have to change intrinsic aspects of their gaits, a finding that indicates there must be some level of neuromuscular flexibility going on. Additionally, one can't help but notice the similarities between the limb loading patterns of below branch quadrupedal locomotion and arm swinging, in which the forelimb becomes the primary weight-bearing and propulsive limb. We believe this may indicate that below branch quadrupedal locomotion may have served as some form of precursor prior to the acquisition of arm swinging.